So despite what happened at Wrestle Kingdom with Kenny Omega retaining his IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship, there appears to still be animosity amongst within Bullet Club, specifically Kenny Omega and Cody Rhodes. Yes, I know he's just called Cody, but really he's Cody Rhodes. Just more crazier if you take out the Stardust stuff. So, yeah. Hey everyone, this is Neo Reality Entertainment. Um... I wanted, I said to myself, I never made it official because I'm, I'm still trying to work things out, but I wanted to make more outside WWE wrestling match discussion videos in order to broaden my horizons more when it comes to the wrestling industry. Like, I've talked about WCW. I'm planning to talk about ECW original matches, so when I get around to it, but um, right now it seems New Japan Pro Wrestling just likes to win me over a lot. So, after what happened at Wrestle Kingdom, which made me a, which made me from being an observer to New Japan Pro Wrestling, a person who just looks at it and sees it sometimes, to basically being a huge diehard fan now after just five matches, five matches. Thanks, Chris Jericho, for getting me into it, and Kenny Omega and Kazuko Okada. Now, when after that, there was a huge amount of tension building because the Bullet Club had defeated Cody Ibushi and his team, and Cody wanted to attack Cody Ibushi with a chair, but Kenny Omega stopped it from happening, probably because in reality they're actually good friends, because it was said that they used they used to be a tag team called the Golden Lovers, or Golden Star Lovers, I, I don't know, the stars in the center, um, yeah, anyways. So, Kenny Omega proposes a new idea. He decides to add in another member. And who exactly do they want to add? Jay White, the Switchblade. The guy who just recently had a match with Hiroshi Tanahashi, which was... Okay, yeah, uh, considering Hiroshi Tanahashi had an injury, had, were found, was finding arthritis and water in his knee, which makes me uncomfortable for some reason... Like, my eyes get all watery when I even think about it for some reason. So, yeah, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> oh, man. So, Jay White looks like he accepted being in Bullet Club, but decided, eh, fuck it, and attacks Kenny Omega. And then it's revealed that he has now teamed up with Chaos, which is a very big faction. I really don't know how the best way to describe it, but... It was, what, one point the dominant force in New Japan, and then all these other factions start forming. So, yeah, they got something right that they could have bought on, like, after the authority was removed. I was like, okay, do a faction warfare, gang warfare. Basically, all these different parties are vying for control. Like, you got the remnant of the authority, you got John Cena's trying to preserve democracy, pretty much, you got the New Day, you got the Wyatt family, heck, you can reform the shield when every, if the storyline is able to go that long, but no, they, they didn't do that. They chose to bring back the authority prematurely, even though I was advocating for it to happen after a rumble at the very least. So yeah, there's gang warfare basically going on in New Japan Pro Wrestling with, uh, this Japan group that's based off of a Spanish promotion that was formed by Tetsuya Nato, Chaos, which had Jido, Yuko Goto, Kazusuko Akata, Will Ospreay, and Yoshihashi. Uh, there's a lot more. And Shinsuke Nakamura, I believe, was a member. And then you got, and now JY has joined up with the group. And he even admitted, yeah, uh, just because I'm in the group doesn't mean I'm your buddy. Like, here's my opinion. Why can't we, within groups, challenge our fellow members for titles? Which is a legitimate question, I wonder. And sure enough, this is brought with distrust because even outside WWE logic is seen as the devil. On some occasions. But continuity is seen as a blessing because... When it was announced that Jay White would face Kenny Omega for the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship of the World at the new new beginning of su Super Sapporo. Okay, I'm gonna have a hard time pronouncing this Sapporo. Sapporo. I I'm pretty sure I got that wrong. So apo I apologize if I get any Japanese names wrong trying to pronounce it. So yeah, Sapporo. 
Um, this would take place on night two, in event where um, they basically take place to represent the new chapter. New Japan is specifically in this location. Like they do it in several other places, like the New Beginning Oka Okasa. Um, I think they have several other beginnings chapters, but um, yeah. So yeah, considering Jay White was a young lion, then took some took a little excursion outside of Japan wrestling and went to these other places to improve himself, which uh, I must stress was successful. Um, yeah, here's the thing: they go ahead. And do something while everyone's doing their entrances. Kenny Omega with um, one of the Young Bucks. Because apparently the other Young Buck was in storyline injured. But um, here's what happened with Switchblade. A.K.A. Jay White. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to get demonetized. Because I'm saying the word Switchblade a lot. Because YouTube is that pathetic. I said it. Do with me as you will YouTube. I dare you Google. So anyways... Uh, they reference that Jay White, back when he was a young lion, fought Kenny Omega in a non-title match when he was still IWGP Intercontinental Champion. And I must stress, this was in um, 2016, and this match ha and the sequel match happened in 2018. Two years, and they bring it up to build a story out of this. More so. Continuity. It's sweet. It's beautiful. So, yeah. Jay White and Kenny Omega are prepared to fight for the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship and I and it came to and it came to me no one's American no, not one American has hold that W that IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship Kenny Omega is the first he's Canadian Jay White if he is to win is from New Zealand so yeah, surprisingly, for a title that is called the United States Heavyweight Championship, it's not really being represented by the U.S. wrestlers. Yeah, that's surprising. Sort of like how Kevin Owens tried to go ahead and say he's the new face of America, despite the fact that he's Canadian, or the tons and tons of other wrestlers who were foreign descent or foreign ancestry and actually is from a foreign place that won the title. Yeah, but if they go ahead and keep going with this, like give foreigners more an opportunity at the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship run, that could actually lead to interesting storylines. Like, I don't know, have an American-based wrestler come in and basically say that he wants to be the first American to hold the United States Heavyweight Championship and represent New Japan Pro Wrestling's excursion to the U.S. because they're doing a show later in a few months and that's a going to be apparently big that they started a title for it so that could lead to some interesting story ideas if they really were to, if they really are to go through with this and since i trust japan more with its continuity new japan pro wrestling's continuity more so than wwe i think they might do it or try to do something different but actually better all i know is, is that chris jericho and tesuso nato probably not going to do it because there's schedule. There's rumors saying that they're gonna have a match at that at the Japan, at the U.S. base show when Japan heads over. So yeah, looking forward to that. So, anyways, Jay White takes on Kenny Omega, and considering this is Jay White's like second big major match, I, I, as far as I've seen, um, I was honestly surprised how good he was. Like, he, he's been wrestling since 2013, he's only 25, and yet now he's being told, you're going to main event a major event for us. The second night of the new beginning of Sapporo, and you're going to fight what many people call the best in the world, Kenny Omega, the cleaner, or the Terminator, and you're going to have a chance to win the U.S. title. And we're expecting you to go, over, go to 30 minutes. And, oh my god, this match was freaking awesome. 
like, wow, this match was way better than I thought would have been with Jay White. Like, Jay White had a pretty good, awesome debut fighting Harusha Tanahashi, but there were some extenuating circumstances that stopped it from being a great match that it could have been since the injury happened a few months of about a month or so prior, I heard for Hiroshi Tanahashi. But um, when I heard th- when I re- watched the match, I was really impressed with Jay White. He's only 25 years old and delivered an awesome match. Now, is it going to say it beat Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega? No. Did it beat Kazuzuko Okada? No. Did it beat Andrade C and Almez and Johnny Gargano wrestling? No. But it's a pretty damn good match. Like I would think I was thinking like maybe Kenny they're trying to test the waters with Jay White. I get that. I really do. But to thrust him into the main event pitcher at that stage, like already, and give him a show stealing ma- uh, give him a big matchup to decide being champion. That was a pretty ballsy move, but I was thinking like, okay, so um, when's the uh, when is Kenny Money going to retain? Yeah, he doesn't. Kenny Omega loses clean. He loses clean, and JY is the new IWGP United States Heavyweight Champion. Holy crap. They, they, they went ballsy. They, they did something hugely risky. They just, like... <laughs> you would think that after Chris Jericho, they would give Kenny Omega more run with the title to prepare for the Japan for the Japan US show that's going to happen in the spring or early summer. I'm trying to remember. But they're going to do that. And everyone thought Kenny Omega was going to have the title run with it there. At least up to that point. But no, Jay White defeats Kenny Omega and wins the title. And surprisingly, here's the thing. The Young Bucks don't get involved. Yeah, I've noticed a trend when I was watching Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega. The Young Bucks didn't get involved. The only time they quote got involved was when Chris Jericho attacked first before the match would begin. And they didn't really attack him. They just more like pushed him like, do, 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 do. Like, dude, that's not cool. Like, aren't you the Bullet Club? Aren't you supposed to be, like, NWO-ish a bit? You thrive in that kind of environment, and now you're trying to be the good guys? So, yeah, that's a pretty interesting angle they did. But, um, I did love JY's performance. It was pretty freaking awesome. And... Man, his character is actually pretty damn awesome. Like, I could, I, I'm really enjoying it. Like, there's some things he still needs to improve on, but he's way ahead of the league than, say, most rookies coming, being homebred in WWE. Like, how long did it take for Reigns to steadily improve? Um, let's see. He started back in 2011, I believe. 2012, he was in the main ring roster, and he was protected in six-man tag team matches with some okay single matches, and then started doing good matches around 2013. So, started doing pretty memorable matches in, like, 2013 to 2014. And... So, judging by the statistics... Four years. Kenny and Jay White has only been wrestling for four years... for. Five years, so to speak, but his New Japan style wrestling started back in 2015, so he's only been doing this for three years in Japan. So, yeah. So, yeah, and, and the fact that Jay White's actually given a really big defining personality, whereas Roman Reigns, he just switches from time to time, and even then, it's not consistent. So, yeah, moving on from that. Um, there were even crazy moments, like, I, like, Jay White's finishing move, it just reminds me of Sister Abigail when Bray Wyatt does it. Um, he also, he's also calling it the Blade Runner, and here's something I found out. He had adopted it from Alex Shelley, 
um, who I believe was his first opponent in New Japan Pro Wrestling on January 30th, 2015. That was his first match against Alex Shelley, and he's adopted that move since. Logic! So, yeah, anyways. Um, yeah, and Kenny Omega, as always, is pretty freaking awesome. I'm... <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. I, I don't see how he can't be awesome. He even made Jay White look like a million bucks. More so. So, yeah, th this was a pretty freaking awesome match. Um... It gives Jay White a huge thing lifted on his shoulder on his shoulders now, since if this is what I think it's going to go, but with Japan I'm not used to its style of storytelling, so anything could happen. I'm going to assume that he's gonna be the guy that is the front runner for the New Japan Pro Wrestling Invasion of the US when they do their big show. That will be a pretty risky move in my opinion, and honestly I welcome it, because yeah, Kenny Omega, he's pretty much guaranteed to sell sh tickets and whatnot, ready to put asses in seats, but yeah, we gotta put more younger talent, more newer guys, like yeah, I know Kenny Omega is is like what, um, 34, and Jay White is 11 years younger than him, but... Yeah, I'm all for more a uh, more bigger, diverse talent of main 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 event potential guys, more so than how WWE handles pushing more multiple guys at once to become main eventers. Oh, the attitude era and ruthless aggression era when we had replacements in case anyone got hurt, and then we didn't have to hit panic mode in WWE. So, Jay White wins his match wins the title, and then Hangman Page, who I recently got their shirt for, is coming in the mail soon from Hot Topic, I just have to wait for a little bit, comes out, and looks like he's going to be the next guy to challenge Jay White. However, Kenny Omega snatches the title from Hangman Page, Adam Page as he's also called, and gives it back to Jay White in respect. Respect, man. And Jay White is allowed to leave unscathed from the Bullet Club. And then Kenny Omega and Hangman Page get into this huge argument. And then Cody, who I also ordered the shirt of the American Nightmare, comes out. And then you got Marty Scroll, the villain. And then you got the Young Bucks getting involved. And, and all these are the top guys in Bullet Club, even though there's a ton of other members. And they and a lot of them were at the show. I was expecting the rest to come out. So, yeah, um, they're arguing. There's pushing it now, getting involved. And in King Omega's anger, he shows his best one of his best friends of the Young Bucks. I think it was Nick or Matt. I I think it was Nick. And Kenny Omega's shocked. He's horrified over what he's done. Cody is basically saying, you're not a leader, you're not being a leader, you're not doing what is necessary for this group, and, yeah, the Young Bucks want to get out of now, like, they get out of the ring after helping, after Matt, I believe, helps his brother Nick to get to the back, and then Marty Scrawl says, okay, you two, Cody, Omega, you need to fix, you need to sort this out, and he leaves the ring, with the fans chanting, Woo! Woo! Because that's in this theme song. I forgot to mention, Adam Cole kept getting that reception during the Extreme Rules match. Like, yeah, considering how Marty Scroll was the guy who replaced Adam Cole, that's actually kind of awesome. But, moving on. Then Hangman Page says, Hey, uh, Kenny, we're cool. And they do the fist bump thing. And then Cody and Kenny talk. Talk, and it looks like they sort things out. For now, at least. But then it happens after months upon months of tension from what I've read. Uh, Cody Rhodes has turned on Kenny Omega. Crossroads in the middle of the ring. And he's having this sick smile on his face. And he's touching his eye where he get where it seems he has a black eye. And just grinning madly at it. 
like like a crazy person and then takes off his suit and then Marty scrolls wondering what the hell and like what the hell's going on and then Hangman Page is convinced by Cody to join in his little crusade against Kenny Omega and sure enough then Kota Ibushi Kenny Omega's former tag team partner comes out after Marty scroll couldn't convince Cody and Hangman Page to stop this little rebellion they're doing and or coup d'etat and then after Cody Ibushi chases them all out, and Marty Scroll, I was wondering, wait, why did he get out? He wasn't even involved in this. He was trying to be the mediator. He's conf- cl- conflicted. Yeah, and I will also discuss the two episodes of being the elite as well, in order to since this also ties in. Um, so Cody Ibushi and Kenny Omega, they're left alone in the ring. And it looks like now they're not going to reunite. And then they hug it out and confetti explodes. And the Golden Lovers are, from what the scene, are reunited. But now that leaves a question. What about Bullet Club? Kenny Omega is still technically the leader. But it seems Cody and Hangman Page are trying to get rid of him. And Cody to be put in place. And then we get to being the elite. I'm talking about the episode that takes place after um, the new beginning of in Sapporo. Kenny, Kenny Omega is not seen for most of the episode, but Cody says that Bullet Club is fine. Everything is fine. We're all fine here. And my scroll after Hangman Page leaves, and it's just him and the Young Bucks, says this: "Are we?" He leads, he let he keeps that lingering. Until he cuts to black. And I thought like, holy crap, he's conflicted. The Young Bucks are conflicted. And yet they, and yet at the beginning of the episode, two hours after the pay-per-view, the Bullet Club, with the exception of Kenny Omega, are all eating together. But it's rather awkward from the vibe I was getting. And every time I looked at it, I was thinking like, is this the post credit scene for the Avengers? Oh my god, this feels like they're, they're ripping off the post credit scene in the Avengers. That's kind of hilarious. So, yeah. And then at the end of the episode, Kenny Omega, with sad music playing, uh, is walking around, heading somewhere in this hotel. There's a woman behind him and then disappears. I, I don't know about that. I think that they said was a... I think people were saying that's a running gag where they have a background person just show up out of nowhere. So, yeah, I don't know. I haven't watched the entire series. Maybe I should start. But, yeah. Um, then Kenny Omega knocks on the hotel room 7, 710, 710, and... It goes to a point of view perspective shot showing Kenny Omega and Cody Ibushi standing at the doorway, confirming that they are indeed back together. And then the camera cuts to show the Young Bucks saying, like, just gesturing to come in. And apparently they're hinting at big something big. It looks like, and this is a little worrying considering how the last time something like this happened, it did not work out so well. Bully Club is going to split. Cody is going to lead his group. Kenny's going to lead his group. It's basically NWO Hollywood versus NWO Wolfpack. Yeah. So, yeah, that that's my concerning part because how are they going to top? How are they going to? make it better than what NWO did back in the 90s. Like, they have the internet, and they're given more creative freedom, and they're not egotistical bastards who kept undermining the story in favor of more money and more power. So, yeah. So, yeah. um, Yeah. And then we get another, and then the, the episode after, we don't know what exactly happened in the meeting between those four, but we get a a dream sequence at the end of that episode, showing that yes, Kenny Omega is going to take on Cody Rhodes at Supercard of Honor in in April, right before WrestleMania, like the day before, which will be freaking awesome. Like, just hope they're allowed to go all out because. Yeah, it's guaranteed to be awesome. And, and then it was confirmed on Twitter that, yes, this match is happening. So, 
I already have a picture. I'm ready to start show. I'm ready to start uh, discussing it when that match happens and when I get a chance to watch it. So, yeah, and then <laughs> here's the bigger thing. Um, Marty Scroll throughout that second part episode, he is switching shirts. One minute he's wearing the Cody Rhodes shirt, the American Nightmare. Then he's wearing the Kenny Omega shirt. Like, that was such a subtle piece that I didn't notice until I rewatched the episode in case I missed anything. And I thought, holy crap, they're doing salty. Holy fuck, they're doing salty. We got salty in wrestling, everybody. Salty in wrestling. Ah! So, yeah. So, my scroll is clearly going to be the Scott Hall in this whole entire feud. He's going to be that guy who doesn't know which side to go to. Does he go with the guy that he's worked with? Or does he go with the guy who just usurped the throne of Bullet Club? And like all the rest of Bullet Club hasn't had a say in this. Just those guys. Just Kenny Omega, Hangman Page, uh, the Young Bucks, Cody, Marty Scroll. Those are the only five guys that's been part of the storyline. But the other Bullet Club members are sure to follow. There's still plenty of them to work with. So, like Tama Tonga, uh... And Bad Luck F Fale, they're, they're really going to get involved in this. Uh, Chase Owens, Yujiro Takahashi. So, yeah, there, there's something going to happen. The Elite is going to take, is going to go to war with the Fractured Bullet Club, led by Cody Rhodes. My Scroll is going to probably be the main focus, and what side does he choose? And he's called the villain, I must stress. And even he doesn't know, what side do I go to? What side do I go to? So, yeah. This is going to be a freaking awesome storyline. But back to Jay White. Yeah. Good luck to him. He has a huge weight on his shoulders. Since now he's going to carry the mantle to probably the show when it invades the U.S. But it, it's going to be something. I can't wait what's going to happen. So this were my thoughts on Jay White versus Kenny Omega at, new, at the new beginning of Sapporo 2018, night two. This was Neo Reality Entertainment. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and donate. Stay tuned for more.